It had been a few weeks since Hoppity Hooper, Fillmore the Bear, or even Professor Waldo Wigglesworth had come up with an ingenious scheme to make money. Well, perhaps I'm losing my grip, fellas. Oh, say not so, Uncle Waldo. Yeah, but Hoppity, we're down to our last cent. Our last cent? See? You be holding out on me, Finster. Hand over that penny. The name is Fillmore. What do you want a penny for? I'm going to put it to good use. Are you going to open a checking account? No, I'm going to weigh myself. Yes, I'm going to cut down on starches. That'll be easy. Why? Because we don't have any money to buy starches with. Now, wait. Wait! I can see it now. Yeah, me too. It says 163 pounds. No. Do you know why people put money into these scales? To see how much they weigh. Yeah, so they can cut down on their starches. No, it's to get these little cards that tell them their fortunes. People will pay any kind of money to look into the future. Why, this scale must be full of money. Yes, that's what we'll do. Uh, bust the scale. No, no, no. I, Waldo Wigglesworth, am about to become a seer. Huh? I'm going to deal in a metaphysics, hypothesis, <laughs> mediumistics. Spiritism, occultism, divination. Theosophism, telepathism, mysticism. Put them all together, they spell money. Money? With my extrasensory gifts, we'll make a million. So Waldo set up in business as a fortune teller. Now, Hoppity, I need your help. Sure. You get under this table, and when I give you the cue, you rap three times, like this. You sure this isn't cheating, Uncle Waldo? Hoppity, don't you trust your own uncle? Well, sure, but... Well, that's settled. Now, you, fenced off, you put on this sheet, and when I say, will the spirit guide materialize, I want you to walk through this door. Okay, okay Waldo. Right this way, gaze into the future. Answer all your vital questions. Who will be the next wrestling champ? Is Amalgamated Yo-Yo going up or down? Will it rain tomorrow? Ask the spirits. They know all. Hurry, hurry, hurry. All right, now, fingers on the table. Spirits of the future. If you hear us, rap three times. Gee, I can't give a rap. All I can do is... That's a rap? Sounded to me like a croak. But perhaps the spirit has a cold. You faker! You planted a frog under the table! Amazing. He must have been placed there by the spirit guide, Mojumbo. Mojumbo? Yes. Oh, great Mojumbo, spirit guide. Will you please materialize? Ooh. Oh. Oh. That's very good, Fillmore. That just looks like a big bear with a sheet over it to me. What a nonsense. If it's a real ghost, let's see you walk through it. Walk through it? <laughs> Why should I? Go on, you phony. Well, if you insist. Get ready to run, Fillmore. The natives are getting restless. But when Waldo approached the mysterious figure... Uh, oh! My goodness! I did walk through him. Don't! Ah, no, 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 no! Has Fillmore really turned into a ghost? Be sure to see our next episode, Spook Watchers, or 
Let's join the Ghost Guard. We'll return to our program after these messages. In our last episode, Waldo went into the ghost-making business. He disguised Fillmore by putting a large sheet over him. But then, a strange thing happened. Oh, great Mojambo spirit guide, will you please materialize? Go on, that looks to me like just a bear with a sheet over him. <laughs> You did that rather well, Fillmore. It don't scare me. If it's a real ghost, why don't you walk through it? Oh, well, if you insist. Get ready to run, Fillmore. The natives are getting restless. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I did walk through him. It's a ghost. It's a ghost. Well, Fillmore, Fillmore, old friend. Hoppity, I can't believe it. There he was a couple of minutes ago. Firm, substantial, and now he's nothing more than mere ectoplasm. Look. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, old man. <laughs> That's Fillmore. <laughs> then you're alive. Then who is this? Ah, uh, it's a ghost. I know that, but, but who is he a ghost of? Or a ghost of who? Uh, that's whom? Well, I could be... <laughs> Napoleon? But then again, I could be... Henry <laughs> the Eighth. Washington. Bullwinkle. <laughs> Caesar. <laughs> Frankenstein. Whoa. I rather like this one, don't you? Uh, can't you go back to the way you were before? I mean, just simple ectoplasm. Ooh, you humans are all alike. No imagination. Or maybe you could just go back to wherever you came from. But I like it here. You're not suggesting you don't approve of my company. Oh, you misunderstood, Hoppy, Mr. Ghost. We want you here. All right, then. Feeling unwanted just makes me furious. Oh, I just want to be loved. You're loved! You're loved! So it seems that our friends were stuck with a ghost. We've got to get rid of this ghost, Fillmore. It's just unnatural, a grown fox going around town with a ghost. Uh, unnatural, heck. It's creepy. You called... Say, isn't that a friend of yours over there? <laughs> Master Fillmore, I think we've lost him. Uh, yeah, I don't see him chasing us. <laughs> At last, I think we've given him the slip. Hoppity, <laughs> 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 do something. We're trying to get away from that ghost. Uh. Gee, that was fun. Now I'll tell you what, I'll be it and you chase me. <laughs> Can't catch me! Is he gone? Uh, yeah, but I think he's coming back when he finds out we ain't gonna chase him. Fillmore, we've got to think of something to get rid of him. I've got it! Well, we don't know how to get rid of this ghost, right? And where do people go when they don't know how to get rid of ghosts? Uh, the Wizard of Oz! No! The library! Ah, here it is, in a translation from the Transylvanian. It says, take a cane, twirl it three times over your head, and point it at the ghost. Then say in a loud, clear voice, Go away, ghost, we don't want you here. Don't bother to pack, just disappear. That makes sense. Don't know why I didn't think of it. So Waldo tried out the spell on their unwelcome visitor. Go away, ghost! We don't want you here! Don't bother to pack! Just disappear! <laughs> the, the book didn't work, Waldo! He must have lost something in translation. Goodness! Now Waldo, Hoppity, and Fillmore have two ghosts on their hands. If Waldo keeps this up, there could be an epidemic. Tune in to our next episode, A Haunting We Will Go, or The Ghost Is Clear. We'll return to our program after these... Last time, you remember, our friends were using a spell to try to get rid of a bothersome ghost. 
Waldo waved a cane over his head three times and said, Go away, ghost. We don't want you here. Don't bother to pack. Just disappear. <laughs> the, the book didn't work, Waldo. It must have lost something in translation. It certainly had. For now, instead of having one ghost, our friends had two, named Wilbur and Claire, a sort of his and hers. I think you better put that book away, Waldo. We're liable to have an epidemic. No, wait. All is not lost. We still have Professor Waldo Wigglesworth's motto to fall back on. What motto? If you can't lick them, join them. We're going to join the ghosts? That means we'd have to... Well, not exactly join them. Use them is more what I had in mind. If you can't beat them, use them is my motto. But how? Well, now, let's see. There must be some way to take advantage of a couple of ghosts. Uh, maybe we could use them to haunt people with. You know, we could... I've got it! We could rent them out to haunt people with. Uh, Waldo, that's what I said. I, oh, said. I don't know why I didn't think of it before. It's natural. Everybody has someone they'd like to haunt. Do you think $10 an hour is too much? So Waldo went into the haunting business and took a small ad in the Wisconsin Gazette. Ghosts for hire, male and female, 347 years experience in haunting, spooking, and devilment. Contact Professor Waldo Wigglesworth, Box 21, Foggy Bog, Wisconsin. Overnight, Waldo Wigglesworth's haunting business was a success. It was true, it seemed. Everyone did have someone they wanted to haunt. Some people haunted their bosses. Mr. Pearson, I've been with this company for 25 years, and I think it's about time I had a raise. A raise? Over my dead body, I'll give you a raise. Uh, would a hundred a week be suitable, my boy? Thank you, Mr. Pearson. You certainly did the right thing there, Mr. Pearson. Miss Benson, I want you to give everyone in the plant a $10 raise. And please bring in some bicarbonate and soda. I'm going to have to cut out these two-hour lunches. Others haunted their mothers-in-law. I say don't sit in that chair. You know that's mother's favorite chair. Hello, baby. Ah, it's a ghost! Stick with me, Wilbur and Claire, and we'll make millions. Millions! As Waldo continued talking, he did not notice his old girlfriend, Susan Swivelhips. And to complicate matters, Wilbur at that instant disappeared, leaving Claire, who had changed into a dazzling female, hanging on Waldo's arm. Waldo Wigglesworth, who is that woman? What? Oh, you mean Claire. Uh, uh, Susan, I'd like you to meet Wilbur. Uh, Wilbur, where are you? Uh, Claire, where did Wilbur go? Uh, Claire? I'm waiting, Waldo. Well, you see, Susan, uh, Wilbur and Claire are ghosts. Uh, Wilbur just disappeared, and Claire changed herself into the ravishing creature you see here. You must be out of your guard to expect me to believe a story like that. Did you get the license number of that truck that hit me? Oh, pardon me, young lady, but is that old man bothering you? You can say that again. You should know better than to try to attach the young lady, a man of your years. Come along, miss. Oh, you poor, poor man. But it's all your fault, appearing and disappearing, and now Susan's got off with Wilbur and won't speak to me. Well, just look at it this way. You've lost the girlfriend, but you've gained the ghost friend. Well. Waldo may have gained a ghost friend, but what about Susan Swivelhips? Tune into our next episode, Who's Haunting Who, or Which Witch is Witch? We'll return to our program after these messages. In our last episode, Susan Swivelhips chanced upon Waldo and Claire the ghost walking down the street and became extremely jealous. <laughs> Did you get the license number of that truck? Pardon me, young lady. But is this old man bothering you? You can say that again. You should know better than to try to accost a young lady, a man of your years. Come along, miss. Oh, you poor, poor.
poor man. Uh, but it's all your fault. Now Susan's got off with Wilbur and won't speak to me. Well, look at it this way. You've lost a girlfriend, but you've gained a ghost friend. But I don't want a ghost friend. I want Susan. Well, if that's the way you feel about it. <laughs> and then Susan left with Wilbur. It's maddening, Hoppity, losing your girlfriend to an apparition. But this isn't like you, Uncle Waldo, giving up without a fight. Can't you think of some way to get her back? You're right, Hoppity. It's time to sit down and give this predicament some thought. I've got it. I'll woo her back. No ghost can match the Wigglesworth charm. For you, my love. Uh... For me? Or for you? For you, darling. For me? All for you. How's it going, Uncle Waldo? Wonderful. I plied her with flowers and jewels, and now I'm going to take her to the dance contest. Uh, professor, I didn't know you knew how to dance. Know how to dance, Fillmore? I'm an expert at terpsichore. <laughs> the shimmy, turkey trot, shag, Lambeth walk, the big apple, you name it, I'll dance it. But those dances are all out of date, Uncle Waldo. Nonsense. No classic dance ever goes out of date. I might even throw in a little cookie <laughs> wing. Sure enough, next morning, Waldo had a trophy. You and Susan won the dance contest? Well, not exactly. Wilbur and Susan won that, but I won the Square of the Year award. It's no use, Hoppity. I know when I'm beaten. Wilbur, I hope you and Susan will be very happy together. You hope who will be happy together? Susan and Wilbur. They're going to get married. <laughs> I don't see that there's any laughing matter. This is going to be the shortest marriage in history. I don't understand. Well, we ghosts only have the summer amongst you humans, and then we go back to what we were. Uh, what's that? TV ghosts. TV ghosts? You know, when your television isn't white and right, you see a kind of ghostly image. Uh, that's you? That's us. Big mouth. But summer was over a week ago and you're still here. Well, that's because we weren't given our calling. Your calling? Yeah. At the first sound of a bugle, poof, there we go. Just an impulse going to thousands of homes all over the country. Uh, I always wondered how that television worked. You mean, if Fillmore blew his bugle, that you and Wilbur would go back inside the television sets for good? Yeah. You see, during summer reruns, we are given the opportunity to go out among you humans and... Fillmore, blow your bugle as you never blew it before. What's the matter, Fillmore? Blow that thing. Uh, I don't know, Professor. I just don't seem to be in the mood. Confound you, Fillmore. You're always blowing that infernal bugle when it's not wanted, and now when it's a matter of life and death. Professor, I am an artist. Then we artists have to have inspiration. You blow that thing or I'll brain you. What do you think of that? It's very inspiring. <laughs> well, here we go, kid. Back to the land of... Situation comedy. And all the news that's fit to see. Doctor, lawyer, private eye. Package shows and sponsors by. Ratings go up, ratings go down. But, but TV ghosts are, are always around. around. This program was brought to you by. Uh, gee, we missed the commercial. Never mind. There'll be another one along soon on the next episode of. The Adventures of Hoppity Hooper. <laughs> it's the law. Look, dear. Stereo. And to think we owe it all to the masked Martin. So because of the masked Martin, the rich were getting richer. And the poor were getting poorer. However, the Masked Martin's escapades did not go unnoticed by that great criminologist, Professor Waldo Wigglesworth. Hoppity, Fillmore, it's time to put a stop to the escapades of the Masked Martin. <laughs>